college was established in 1972 and we've completed 50 long years. And 50 long years have produced so many uh, students who study Sakya traditions and continue to study those traditions which are the oldest Buddhist traditions. And Sakya as we call Bhagwan Buddha also, Sakya Muni. So Sakya traditions come from what is present in Bihar and uh, Sakya Muni himself came from there and how Buddhism at a certain point in time due to various invasions suffered and all our monks took refuge in Tibet and in the mountains and now when problem occurred in 50s in Tibet those very monks came down and came here. So the tradition of continuity, tradition of dharma continues. And when it comes to India, I must say, uh, Buddha is ours and not just Buddha, but the tradition of being on the side of the truth is also what India stands for. India has always stood for what is right. And those were the values which Bhagavan both gave to the world. Value of truth, value of compassion, value of wisdom, and away from Krishna, away from greed. The most problems which we see in the world today are problems because people are working for greed and not for need. And Gandhi also said that there's enough this earth has for everyone's need but not greed. But to remove the mind from the greed and to focus on what is right, I think what dharma teaches us, dharma teaches us to be kind and compassionate to all living beings and also to the non-living beings. Because there is a universal balance and that universal balance has to be kept and maintained and that universal balance can be maintained only when each one of us, the teaching of Buddha again, the universal truth is that we are all insignificant little beings in this cosmos, in this universe. And we are only here between the time of birth to the time of death, when our bodies will become one with the very ocean from where we came and the souls will be wherever they have to be. And if we all realize just this much of truth, the wisdom will prevail on us. And when the wisdom prevails on us, all the wrong things that people end up doing will also disappear from one's life. And it's only people who collectively engage in wrong things Sometimes individuals with small heart and small mind are the ones who, who are the cause of disturbance. If one follows the teachings of Buddha in the true nature, the true manner, then I must say that Hindu and Buddhist traditions are common and they are completely intertwined. They come from the same root. And that same root, whether it's Ashtamangala, or is the teaching, it's, the, it's identical and thus Buddhism is as much part of us as Hinduism is part of Buddhism because the roots are the same and keeping those traditions together is what we all are here for celebrating the truth, goodness, wisdom and celebrating what humans can do for each other and the nature also People discuss sustainable development goals, we all know, we are all part of those discussions. But what causes the disturbance in the Earth's atmosphere? If one was to apply deep psychological science, is the human mind, is the human grief which causes those disturbances? More than me, and I always say, I said at least post-COVID, after the pandemic, we have seen in front of our eyes. All of us must realize that life is uncertain. 
and if life is uncertain, we are here to play our role between our birth and death. And if we can play that role correctly, without dis disturbing too much of humanity around us, without disturbing too much of environment around us, then we would secure this earth for our future generations. The fact is that post-COVID fathers realize how much does one need to eat? How much do we need? And I'm speaking to very celebrated monks here. All of you can go without meals for many, many days or maybe live on very frugal one meal a day or no meal a day. And for common people like us, we also realize that you really don't need to eat a lot. You really don't need much in any case. You need very little to live and live well. Unfortunately, humans lose that balance. And that imbalance is causing all the upheaval across the world. And I just pray for the well-being of all my fellow brothers and sisters, all my friends, because Buddhism is as much part of Indian tradition as Indian tradition is part of Buddhism. Whether it's Mahatara, or Ashtamangala, or the chants, or the meditative practices. And the best part, why I say Buddhism is universal, because it means nothing, and Buddhism talks about universality of human consciousness. Buddhism starts from within, starts from your inside, starts from within yourself, and that inward-looking thought, I think all humans across the globe can practice that, that you just have to be by yourself to, to feel what the consciousness is. And once people learn the Sakya traditions, which this college has very well uh, preserved, conserved, and is also deciphering the message to the coming generations, the new generations, the Sakya gurus experiences, experiences of meditative practices, experiences of consciousness, experiences of universality of thought. I can only say I bow before all of you for preserving and conserving our traditions because these are common traditions for all of us. Sakya Muni is as much mine as it is yours and we all pray before the Sakya Muni. May God bless us all. May the God blessing be upon all of us. With these words, Jai Jai.